I'm starting a new series on YouTube, which will hopefully be as much entertaining as it is educational for understanding how different enclosure designs affect your subwoofer's performance. Here's how it'll work. Boom or Bust is the name of the series, and it's where I get you guys, my audience, to submit 3D CAD models of subwoofer enclosures, which I then put head to head in a competitive leaderboard. These enclosures will be 3D printed, and then a series of tests will be run to determine whose is the loudest design within a, a set parameters that I specify. The details for this and the controlled variables for the testing are as follows. For the first season, you guys will be designing enclosures for a 12 inch subwoofer scaled down by a factor of six. So instead of a 12 inch driver with an FS of 22 to 28 hertz, you'll be building enclosures, designing enclosures for a two inch driver with an FS of around about 150 hertz. Now the design of an enclosure and the way an enclosure works is just fluid dynamics. So this scales up perfectly from small to large. So the best performing designs from the series will perform equally as good when scaled up to a proper subwoofer size. This series will let you guys try out all of your crazy wacky enclosure designs that I know a lot of you have without wasting money, time, resources actually building them and also get to brush up on some 3D CAD skills or learn it if this is something new to you. It's really cool skill to have. There's lots of papers and guides on how to build the perfect box for your subwoofer but acoustics is still kind of experimental and some things that you might not think would work may end up actually striking acoustic gold and becoming a fantastic design so be as, as wild as you like with your designs. For each season of this new series, the driver that we use will be kept the same. I've got two drivers here that I haven't quite decided which one to use yet, um, but the TS parameters have all been accurately measured from these drivers because they were different to the listed specs. And I've chosen these drivers to best resemble a mid-level 12 inch subwoofer when scaled up by a factor of six. For each enclosure design featured, there will be a impedance sweep performed to see how the box is loading the cone at different frequencies and also an RTA test sweep, which will show up any distortions that the box itself is adding to the waveform. This will not only be really interesting to see how different box designs and geometries affect how the cone moves, but also how the wave emits from the box and cone as a whole and how you then experience it. Since a subwoofer that you want to use in your car would ideally have good output between 25Hz and 60Hz, for the first season I'll be taking a dB reading of 4 scaled frequencies and then taking an average of those for scoring purposes. And because this is scaled, the frequencies are also scaled to best suit these smaller drivers. So 25Hz becomes 150Hz, 33Hz becomes 198Hz, 45 hertz becomes 270 hertz and 60 hertz becomes 360. So those are the four frequencies that we'll be measuring. It's possible that in future seasons, we'll focus more on one note wonder burp style boxes. But for now, I want to focus on bandwidth and the ability to play music and long demos through these enclosures that you design. For the measurements, I'd love to use a Termlab or SPL Lab style sensor, but unfortunately the kit that I've got already only goes up to 120 hertz, and I'm not willing to fork out the extra for the wideband sensor at this time. So we'll be using an RTA mic with REW software, uh, provided that it can handle the high dB levels that are gonna be subjected to in the testing. The dB measurements will take place in a scaled typical cabin volume um, with the microphone position to best represent what a listener might experience. The readings, I think I'm going to perform them twice, once with the cabin sealed off completely and one with one of the doors open um, which simulates a proper droppers low frequency style demo with the microphone in the sealed side which if you've ever experienced one of those demos sitting in the sealed side with the driver's door open for example is absolutely brutal especially at low frequencies so this would be great to test haven't decided if i'm going to do both of these sealed side and the door open maybe one or the other depending on how they perform uh, or what you guys think um, but i think probably i'll end up doing both because i'm sure people will want to see both the enclosure design that you make can be as crazy as you like. It doesn't have to be a typical cube or square, and it doesn't have to conform to the limitations of wood or regular materials, but it does need to fit into the boundaries of 150 millimeters by 230 millimeters by 210 millimeters cube. This size represents the typical space you'd have in a scaled cabin with the back seats folded down. 
Also, bear in mind, when you're designing this, it's going to need to be 3D printed. So think about supports and where they might need to be for printing. For example, a square box with a crazy shaped aeroport inside that just floats in midair isn't really going to print without a ton of supports and they might be hard to access and get out. So when you're designing it, it needs to either have a separate lid that I can put on afterwards or the design needs to be sliced in half. I can do that if you don't want to do that. Just design it and I'll slice it in half for printing in two pieces to then glue together. But just think about how things are going to print and where supports are going to end up and if I can actually get to them to take them out. Even if you don't have a 3D printer, you can download a slicer program like Cura, which will let you visualize how it prints layer by layer so you can see are there any supports that I'm not going to be able to get to to take out or are there any bits that randomly start printing in midair that are just going to fail. Power to these little drivers from the amplifier will be increased until one of two limits are hit. Firstly, either the mechanical excursion limit, signified by the coil gently tapping the back plate, or by when I reach 20 watts clamped to the speaker. The 15 watt RMS speakers here could typically take a lot more than that in a short burst, like maybe 40 or 50 watts or so, but I want your designs to be optimized for long demos and music, and I don't want to sacrifice efficiency for mechanical power handling and then just end up burning the voice coils in long music demos if you were to scale these up. Like I said though, this might be changed for future seasons and we might do like burst one note wonder style boxes later down the line. I think the amp I'm going to use to drive these is probably going to be my trusty old realistic PA amplifier which some of you will find nostalgic. Before I actually do the DB tests in each video, I thought it'd be really fun to actually do some bass demo videos with these enclosures that you guys throw at me. It'll be using tracks with bass frequencies between 25 and 60 hertz, and there'll be no microphone limiter when I do these, so it will sound like a real bass test video. But because of the frequency difference, the tracks will be sped up by a factor of six, so the 25 to 60 hertz bass range in the music then becomes in the range that these enclosures and drivers are designed to produce. Then, after after I've recorded the video, the footage will be slowed back down again by a factor of six so that it's all back to the right speed again and that the video should look and sound exactly like a real life bass demo. I'm quite excited to see how that comes out. I might even try and find a, a doll or something that's got some thin enough hair to sit in the window and get some, get some little doll hair tricks going as well for that section. And because that will be done before the DB tests, the demo videos might actually give you some idea as to how these enclosures are going to perform when it comes to the DB testing. So you can kind of watch it watch the demo and think oh wow that's going to perform really well at these frequencies or oh, that sounds like ass that's not going to do much at all so it gives you some kind of thing to to preempt as to how it's going to perform for these designs that you send me i'm not going to make the dimensions public unless the designer wants to share them with the world if a design performs particularly well in this series and you want to run it in your own vehicle, scaled up of course, um, then it's best to contact the designer. Um, there'll probably be details in the descriptions of each video of who designed it and some email address if you want to get in contact with them to then maybe pay them for the design scaled up or for a custom design based around what they made. For now, I don't really know how long each season is going to last for, maybe until it kind of gets stale or the submissions slow down a bit, or unless there's some specific demand for a change like two drivers, for example, which would open up the possibility for bandpass, hybrid bandpass or isobaric designs using two drivers. I actually had the idea at the end of each season to have the winning enclosure for that season actually made by one of the top fabricators here in the UK scaled up for a 12 inch woofer so you can see how well it actually performs in real life as well but that's pretty costly that will be very expensive to do and it really depends on how much money this series as a whole brings in via ad revenue on YouTube or via sponsors which speaking of sponsors, I do plan on having this series sponsored in some way, but I don't want to do the typical YouTube VPN rubbish earphones or cybersecurity and crap that you see everywhere else on YouTube. I, if this is going to be sponsored, um, I want it to be kept audio related so that the stuff that I'm talking about or showing actually might be of interest to some of you. So if you or someone you know runs a business selling products or services that you think my audience would enjoy and be interested in, and you want to buy either a 
sponsored segment, a sponsored message, or even as simple as a sticker on the test equipment to be seen on each, on each video, then get in touch. There'll be details in the video description. And hopefully that might help turn this series into something even more entertaining and doing crazy things like getting these enclosures built and scaled up to see how they perform in the real world. So that's kind of how it's going to work. For the first episode, as like an introduction to the series so you can see how it pans out and how it's going to work, I actually threw together a very basic, simple, aeroported enclosure that we'll use. And then these user submitted enclosures will start from episode two. For now, I'm going to keep it to one enclosure design per episode, but that might change in the future with head to heads or something else that I haven't thought of yet. But yeah, one enclosure per video for the time being. So yeah, I hope you guys are as excited about this as I am. If you've got any comments and suggestions, then feel free to throw them down below about how the, you think the testing should be done or any suggestions that you have. I'll definitely take them on board because I haven't started this yet. I've just been doing some basic testing. But until then, I'll see you in the first episode.